What's up Honda fans? I'm Honda Laura. Today we have a matchup for the 2016 Honda Pilot. We went out and got a 2016 Ford Explorer to see how they compare to each other. So let's get it going. As always, we would like to say thank you to Herb Chambers Honda of Seekonk for letting us take out the pilot today. We would also like to thank our friends at Herb Chambers Ford of Braintree for letting us take out the Explorer as well. So this matchup is coming to you from Sweetberry Farm in Middletown, Rhode Island. It's absolutely beautiful. Today, we have the Honda EXL with Sensing. It stickers for around 37.7. We have the Ford Explorer to match it up against. It is the XLT model and it has a 202 package. So both of them are gonna be the all-wheel drive and the four-wheel drive with leather interior. We're gonna see what you get for those price points. So let's take a look at the exterior. The 2016 Pilot is the beginning of the third generation. Second generation Honda Pilots, those boxy ones, they wouldn't even be able to fit in with these competitors, but the 16 completely does. Starting at the front end, a chrome-filled giant grill. It has LED daytime running lights, projected beam headlights, and fog lights. All of these things are standard for EXL Pilots, so nothing is an option. Along the side, you have 18-inch alloy wheels. All Honda Pilots are gonna come with alloy wheels. Mirrors are uh, body colored side, they're heated and they have the expanded view and lane watch, standard on EX models and higher, which is amazing. Chrome along the windows, um, moonroof standard on EX and higher. You have keyless entry, the uh, smart entry system with the push button start, EX and higher with the auto walk away. Down along the side, capless fuel system is now starting on the Hondas. Along the back side, deck lid spoiler, backup camera standard, LED brake light standard on all pilot models and auto lifting tailgate for the EXL. Now let's take a look at the Ford. The front end of the Ford Explorer, we love it. It looks just like a Range Rover. It kind of reminds us of that style. Awesome. On the XLT, there is LEDs everywhere. LED signature lights, LED headlamps, and the LED fog lights. I love the front end. I think it looks really good. Along the side, 18 inch aluminum wheels, all of the Explorers have uh, aluminum wheels. You get 20s when you go up to the higher models, just like the Pilots. Roof rails on this one, I like them. They're silver because they kind of offset the color. There is a panoramic moonroof on here, but it is an additional $1,500 option. Mirrors are the black, they are heated, and they have turn signal indicators, which is nice. Also has an intelligent smart entry system, push button start, keyless. There's a remote start, engine start here, as well as the Pilot. There is a chrome on the side skirt, which looks really nice. It says Explorer. I think it gives it a little extra. Also has capless fuel system. And then around the back, a really nice deck lid spoiler. Parking sensors, which are part of that 202 additional, uh, additional package. And then the LED brake lights standard on all Explorer models. The only thing is that this one does not have auto tailgate. Let's take a look underneath the hoods. Under the hood of the 2016 Honda Pilot is a 3.5 liter V6 iVTEC engine with the EarthDreams technology. It produces 280 horsepower. The six-speed automatic transmission yields 18 city, 26 highway, and a combine of 21 miles per gallon. Under the hood of the 2016 Ford Explorer is also a 3.5 liter V6, but this one is a TI VCT engine which produces 290 horsepower. Its six speed select shift automatic transmission produces 16 city, 23 highway, and a combined of 19 miles per gallon. Even though the Ford has more horsepower, the Honda is over 200 pounds lighter, so it is more fuel efficient and a little more nimble off the start. They both have the same tow capacity, 5,000 pounds, so either the Honda's all-wheel drive system or the Ford's four-wheel drive system will get the job done. Let's go inside and see the comfort and convenience options. We are behind the wheel for the 2016 Ford Explorer. 
Not as modern as the Pilot, but still very luxurious. I am loving the dual multi-information displays up front. They are super dynamic and colorful and easy to use with the buttons right on the steering wheel. So they have streamlined everything and doubled things up for multi-purpose. I think it's great. You have everything you want to know. You can make and receive phone calls. You can change what you want to listen to right up front. So you don't have to divert your eyes down to the display. So the sync system is um, the Ford MyTouch. This is an option. The um, 202 package gives you that MyTouch option. It's really nice. So you have all the four corners. It's super responsive. It's quick and it's precise. Making and receiving phone calls, all of your information, your climate controls are all right here in the infotainment. It does do some, most of the same infotainment that the Pilot does with the um, Sirius XM radio, playback, streaming Bluetooth wirelessly, things like that. The climate controls, Tri-Zone is actually a option. And it's not as dynamic as the other one. This one gives you a lot of options. You can control everything from the back. This one can do the same, but it's kind of hard to get there. So it has a lot of steps to get access the back climate controls, but you can get there. We're behind the wheel for the 2016 Honda Pilot. This is the EXL with Honda Sensing. Honda Sensing is a thousand dollars additional cost. What it is, is four different things that help you drive safer. It is adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, collision mitigated braking system, and the road mitigation. So it just tells you if you're veering out of the lane, it'll give you a little vibration. Really nice features though too, they work really well. 4.2 inch information, uh, information display up front with a digital odometer. Ecosystem is standard on all Honda Pilots, just boosts your fuel economy. Leather wrapped steering wheel, there's tons of buttons on the steering wheel. The arrows for your uh, multi-information display up front. Bluetooth standard on all Honda Pilot models. Audio control so you don't have to take your hands away when you want to use the infotainment system. That's really nice too. To the 8 inch touchscreen display audio system. It is really nice because it gives you a lot of connectivity with your smartphone. Honda's really into the times and they're updated and they know what people want and what they want to use. The Honda Link Connect is a great platform to get in-car tech support, maintenance, keeping up with any recalls. It's a great way to keep connected with your car. The Tri-Zone climate controls are really nice. They made a nice better layout so you, the driver can control what's happening for the passengers in the back. Heated seats are standard for the leather options. You have a quick charge 2.5 amp USB connection that works really well. There is storage everywhere on the Honda Pilot. It's great. Giant center console, map pockets everywhere. Moonroof is standard for EX models and higher. Home link, your auto dimming rear view mirror. Everything in here is super comfortable. It's very modern. Like I said, Honda is with the times. The Ford Explorer seems pretty old school, just like a revamp of their traditional layout of the inside of the car. The Pilot is super modern, with the times, really connected with their smartphones, giving users what they want. Very comfortable in the Ford, but modern and stylish in the Honda. Let's go in the back seat and see what's for the passengers. So we're in the back seat of the Honda Pilot. The seats aren't as comfy as the Ford, and the dimensions say it's a little bit smaller, but it feels a lot bigger back here. Let's take a look at the third row. One place that the Honda Pilot is dominating is retraction of the second row seat. It's the one touch on the EXL models. Touching the button once automatically gets those seats out of the way, and then we can climb in. And there is 31.9 cubic feet of legroom back here. And the Honda Pilot is seated for eight. The Explorer says it's only for seven. Very quickly folding down the third row seats will show you the ample amounts of cargo space. If you were to fold down the second row, there would be 83.9 cubic feet of cargo space throughout, more than the Ford. Let's go check a look. Let's go check out that. Space. These are the most comfortable seats I think I've ever sat in my life. Um, dimensionally, it says that there is more car, uh, more legroom in here than the other one. Um, it's pretty comfy. There's, it seems that my feet can go down straight. Let's check out the third row. All right, let me just uh, let me 
just read the directions here and figure out how to fold the seats down. So, all right, one, uh, two, and three. Okay, now I can get into the back seat. Now that I tackled that maze, I finally got into the back seat. It's pretty comfy. I can see why there's only seven passengers because there's only two seats here. Um, because it bumps out here. There's a giant, like, a lot of cup holders and storage, but what the hell are these headrests? All right, now. One, two, but it's actually labeled one, and then three, which is actually labeled two. Okay. So after you solved all these puzzle pieces, then you'll finally be able to recline all the seats and then you'll get 81.7 cubic feet of cargo space in the Ford, which is not as much as the Pilot. But it's pretty spacious. Both the Pilot and the Explorer excel in different areas, but like we always say, what really counts is behind the wheel. So we're gonna take it out on the road and off the road and see how they handle. So we're driving on a lot of rocky, uneven terrain, and we're using all the different man traction management, and it's really, really smooth. It's still really quiet. It's, other than if you're hitting like a giant hole, it's really soft and smooth. It's nimble and it's quick, so I, I really like the new Pilot. It drives really solid, and I'm always confident that it will handle the terrain that I'm on, sand, the mud, or the grass. I find the Explorer is super comfortable ride. It has great suspension. There is kind of like, um, it's a little sluggish with the power, but overall it's so comfortable to drive in. When we were driving to Ford of Braintree, we weren't sure what to expect with this car driving wise, but it feels like super traditional. It makes me feel like I'm driving like an old Cadillac with comfy couch seats. Well, Honda fans, that was our review for the 2016 Honda Pilot versus the 2016 Ford Explorer. I think at the end of the day, it comes down to the reliability of a Honda versus the style and substance of the Ford Explorer. What do you think? Comment below. Thank you to Herb Chambers Honda of Seacon for letting us take out the Pilot today. And to our friends at Herb Chambers Ford of Braintree, thank you for letting us take out the Ford. Also, thank you to Sweetberry Farm in Middletown, Rhode Island for letting us use your awesome location. Don't forget to like our video and subscribe to our channel. I'm Honda Laura, and I'll see you next time.